Hey everyone, today we're talking about GitHub, a super important topic. We'll cover things like cloning, pushing, polling, forking, making pull requests. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. If you're not already familiar with the basics of Git, things like adding and committing, then take a look at my previous video I put out. I'll link to it. It's called Learn Git in 15 Minutes, and then come back to this one. And there are pretty thorough notes for this video. You can find the link down there in the description as well. Lots of content here, sort of step-by-step -step guide to what I'm covering. All right, so let's start with the basics here. What is GitHub? What is it compared to Git? What's the relationship? So they are separate entities. You can use Git completely on its own. It's just a version control system. It tracks the changes to our files or our projects over time. But GitHub is what allows us to share our Git repositories with team members. We can publish things online. Uh, we can collaborate on open source projects. It's kind of like a social network or a platform for Git repositories. If you think of something like, uh, let's say Photoshop, you can make these Photoshop projects and you might wanna collaborate with somebody. So you put it up on Dropbox, then they download it and they work on it. They put it back up on Dropbox, you download that. It's kind of like that relationship, although that's a bit limited uh, because Dropbox doesn't really have any features that allow you to do much in the browser. You just download something. Whereas GitHub has actual functionality that pertains to Git in the browser. So that will make sense when we get there. So that's the relationship here. Git is the main technology. GitHub is the platform to share it and collaborate using Git. So if you're brand new to GitHub, the first thing you'll need to do is register an account, go to github.com, register. Uh, you'll have to confirm your email, I'm pretty sure. You'll also be prompted to choose a subscription or a plan. If you're just starting out, I would just go with the free stuff. You really don't need the paid version of GitHub unless you're a, a company or you're working on something you want to keep secret, but you still want to use GitHub. Now, how do we actually use GitHub? Uh, there's a bunch of different workflows and different scenarios. The first one we'll talk about is when you have some code or a repository on your machine, has nothing to do with GitHub, and you want it to be on GitHub. You want to push it up to GitHub so you can share it with somebody or collaborate with somebody else or, or just post it online so people can see it. To do that, we'll first make our local repo with Git. I have one already. If I type git status, uh, I do have a repository here. It's extremely simple. It is a single text file called playlist.txt, and it has a couple of songs and different artists. And if I look at git log, there's a couple commits. I made the file. I added two songs and then like five songs, and then I alphabetized them by artist name. It doesn't really matter, but whether it's a single file or a, a 20 or a thousand file application, it's the same process that we're going to go through. So I have my changes committed, and this is all just on my computer. To get it up on GitHub, we need to go to github.com and tell GitHub we want to make a new repository. We select a name, then we have to connect the two. I need to tell my local repository, here is this URL for GitHub that I want to be able to push my code up to. We set up something called a remote, and then we finally push using that new remote. So the first thing we'll do is go to GitHub. I'm signed in here. You can click up top, new repository. You can also go new right there. It'll take you to the same place. We'll give the repository a name. I'll call this one playlist. I'll give it a simple description. We can choose public or private. In the past, uh, you could only do public on a free account. I think nowadays on a free account, you're just limited to the number of private repos, but I'm gonna keep it public so you can see this. And I'm not gonna bother initializing it with a readme file, but if you do want a readme file, it's very easy to get one made for you by GitHub. So I'm gonna click create, and it takes a moment and I'll see a new page. So this gives me a couple of options here. If I don't have a repository yet on my machine, it tells me, okay, initialize one, add, commit, and then deal with GitHub. But we have an existing repository. So these are the two commands we need. And this first one is what I was talking about, adding a remote. So a remote is just, it's kind of like a label for a, uh, a URL. It's a way of telling Git, here is this remote place, an online place where I want to be able to push code up to or retrieve code from. So we need this URL definitely. We can just copy this entire command, git remote add. And then this part, what we have as origin, is just a name or a label for the remote. In my terminal right now, I have a command git remote dash v. This will list the remotes that I have. Right now, I don't have any. I haven't set any up. But if I paste this in, I'm going to name it origin. That's a pretty standard conventional name if you have one remote. You could name it something else. You could call it my GitHub or 
random place online. It doesn't matter, you just need to reference that name. It's kind of like a variable for a URL. So I'm gonna hit enter. Now if I type git remote-v again, I now have a remote. This URL has a name of origin. So the final step to actually get my code up here, because right now it's completely empty, I need to push my code. So it's not enough just to set up a remote. We have to tell Git when to push code up, when to get our changes from the local version up to the GitHub version. So that's what this command is right here, git push dash u origin master. And this origin just needs to match the name of your remote. So if you're following along, it will be origin. But if you named yours GitHub place, then you need to do a git push GitHub place. And then this right here is the branch and all my changes are committed on the master branch, on branch master, so I'm gonna go with that, but if I wanted to push a different branch up, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna hit enter, and if you do this, it may ask you for your GitHub username and email, you can't, or a password, you can't just push willy-nilly to anybody's repository and overwrite their changes, you need to have permission, so it's gonna check based off of your credentials. Now if I come back here and I refresh the page, my code is here. You'll see now I have my playlist.txt file and I can view the commits. If I click on four commits, here are my commits that I had locally. All of them are up on GitHub. So I can see the very first one where I just made the blank playlist.txt. The second one, I added two songs in and so on. Here I reordered things so you can see I get a diff. So that is pushing up and if I made more changes, on my local version, I commit them, I would run this command, git push dash u origin master to push those changes up to GitHub. We set up the remote one time and then you push whenever you want to sync your changes up to GitHub. But now what I wanna show you is what happens when somebody else makes changes. So if I set up my repository so that I can permit other collaborators, which is very easy, if I just go into settings right here and then I go to collaborators, I can add somebody which I just did. And I'm gonna have Cody change this repository. He's going to make a change and push it up and we won't have that change on our machine. So then we'll need to pull down. Okay, a couple hours later, there's a new commit. If I go to commits, there's now five and you can see Cody's commit, add my favorite, adds my favorite. And, uh, oh, thanks for that, Cody. He added his song down there and you can see I don't have it on my local copy. It's only on GitHub. So to get it, it's kind of the inverse of pushing to Origin Master. We'll instead pull from Origin Master. Origin is the name of that remote, and then Master is the branch. Branch Master, that is where the change was made. So I'm gonna try that now. Git, pull, and it's always a good idea to just make sure you don't have uncommitted changes. Git, pull, Origin, Master. So Origin is the URL, Master is the branch. Cool. It tells us one file changed, there was two insertions, one deletion. I think he moved something around accidentally. And now if we hop over to our editor, I can see Cody's uh, lovely change that he added to this file. Thank you, Cody. On the topic of pushing and pulling, let's take a look at working with different branches other than master. So I'm gonna make a new branch in one line, git checkout dash B, and let's say I wanna make a relaxing playlist, a separate version. I don't wanna change master, but this will be a, something I wanna try out. So git checkout dash B, relaxing. I'm now on that branch. I'll make some changes to the file. Okay, so I added some new songs in. I'm going to now commit this to this branch, relaxing. I'll just do git add playlist, git commit, add relaxing songs. Okay, so now when I run git push, Instead of doing git push dash u origin master, the branch I now wanna push is relaxing. So master is the only one currently on GitHub, but I'm telling it, here's a new branch I want to add. So give it a moment, then we'll hop over to GitHub, refresh the page, and you can see there's a, a change. Your recently pushed branches, relaxing. Here, I can toggle between the different branches. So I'm on master right now, this is what we see, if I switch over to relaxing, it's only the relaxing songs. So that's pushing a different branch other than master up, still using origin as the destination, the remote. All right, so that's pushing up changes to GitHub, making your own repository, being in charge of basically everything. 
You can add collaborators and get, they'll have permission to push and override your changes or make updates like Cody did to uh, our playlist, but that's not the only way of using GitHub. Here's uh, an example repository. It's called face swap. It is some code. I think it's all Python and it helps you make these face swaps, these deep fakes. If I wanted to get this code on my machine, it is open source, it's on GitHub, I can clone it. So here is a new command. We can just copy this URL, click that button or command C. And then a very important thing to note is that you do not want to clone a repository into another repository. Right now I'm inside of my playlist repository. So I'm going to back out and then I'll make a new directory. I'll call this one uh, deep fake and then CD into that. Type git status again, just to make sure. Okay. Now we can run git clone and then paste that URL. And this will probably take a while. I think it's a pretty large repository. So it's going to go and fetch all of those pieces, all of the files, all of the information, all of the commit history, all the git history, everything, and put it in a folder on my machine and I'll have everything. But I won't be able to push up changes. That would be pretty crazy if somebody puts an open source project on GitHub and anybody could change it without permission. Uh, that doesn't really work. As you saw, I had to give Cody access. I had to give him collaborator permission to allow him to push code directly to the repository. So we're going to talk about a, a really common workflow that involves something called pull requests. But first, let me just show you uh, what we end up with. If we CD into face swap, there's a ton of files. If I type git log, tons and tons of commits. I mean, I could be scrolling for a long, long time. It looks like there's how many? 914 commits. So I have all of that here, but remember I cannot push up. So if I want to make changes, I want to try and contribute to an open source project. What I need to do is make a pull request. And the workflow for that is a little different. What we do is we actually fork a repository. There's a button right here. This makes you your own copy on GitHub. So it takes the exact current state of this application or of this repo and makes you your own version and you have permission to do whatever you want to that version. Then you can make changes, push them up to your version, to your fork, and then you can make a request to face swap, for example, the devs. You write a little explanation on GitHub. I'll show it to you in a moment. And then they can reject it or accept it and merge it in. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. I have a, a much simpler repository open. This is actually a demo repo from GitHub called Spoon Knife. The point is that you're supposed to fork it. Uh, it doesn't really have any meaningful content in here. It's just an educational repository that we can use instead of trying to fork and make changes to that face swap, which was a massive project and we don't want to bother the developers with something useless. We're going to fork this repository. So I'm going to click fork right now and I'm going to fork it to my account. It will take a moment and it's making a copy for us. Like I said, exactly the same state, just our version. We can do whatever we want with this. We can add a thousand files. We can do anything. And this is the basic workflow. We fork, we clone our fork. So we don't clone the original, we clone the fork. And notice how the URL says cult slash spoon knife forked from GitHub slash spoon knife. So now we're going to clone it. And again, we don't want to do it inside of an existing repo. So we're going to run git clone and then paste that URL cult slash spoon knife or whatever your fork is. And then we should have a spoon knife directory and we should now have a repository and a couple of files. So I'm going to make a change or two very quickly. Okay. Here's what we have an index HTML, a readme and styles.css. Let's just go in and make everything purple. Well, at least the background color purple for star. So we'll go with purple, fantastic choice of color. If I may say so myself, we're going to commit that change. So git add styles, we're going to commit. We'll go with make everything purple. Okay. And then we need to push. So just double check. We have our, our remote, which we automatically get when we clone a repository, we cloned it from this URL. So it sets that as the origin for us. So now we run a git push dash u origin master. We're pushing the master branch up to our fork. Oh, I misspelled it there. Gave myself a little heart attack. And then if I go back to my fork on GitHub, we should see that my change is here. If I just go to commits, make everything purple now shows up. Awesome. 
So we still haven't actually changed the original in any way, or we haven't attempted to. We've just updated our fork. So they're out of sync, and it tells me this. This branch is one commit ahead of the actual original spoon knife. If I do want to propose these changes, fingers crossed, hopefully the generous developers will accept my suggestion of making everything purple, I can click on pull request right here. So I'll click that. And notice the screen is going to change. I'm now looking at GitHub slash spoon knife, not Colt slash spoon knife. And I can compare the changes. And I don't know, I think I messed up some of the spacing um, with my VS Code editor when I saved. It updated the spacing to be tabs. Or, but you can see my changes here. Everything else is the same. It looks like this was all removed and re-added. Uh, but this is really the only the new line. So background color, set it to purple. And I'm going to click Create Pull Request. Then all I do is add in a comment, explain um, what this commit is, why I'm trying to contribute it. You can read the guidelines, which I highly recommend you do if you plan on actually contributing. And then we would just click Create Pull Request. And then we just wait, and hopefully it's accepted. Uh, and if it is, those changes will become part of the original repository. If it's not, then we still have our own changes. We're just making a suggestion. To keep things simple, I just had us make changes to the master branch and make a pull request from our forks master. But what a lot of open source repos want you to do is make a topic branch. So here's React. This is the official React repository. If we look at pull requests, there's quite a few open pull requests. There's over 8,000 closed requests. Let's take a look at one of them, like this pull request that was made. And you'll see that it was not made from this developer, Chris Dobby's master branch. It was from a topic branch called DevTools16924, it looks like. The mechanics are absolutely the same. It's just a different pattern to follow um, on these larger projects. Topic branches can help make it cleaner and easier to understand pull requests. We can see that this particular pull request has 171 additions, 21 deletions, and that's pretty much it. It's open, it's waiting for some action to be taken. And lastly, let's take a look at the other side of this experience of actually accepting or rejecting a pull request. So while I was recording this, I had Ellie, one of my friends and co-instructors, I had him make a pull request to the playlist repository that we've been working with. If I go to the pull request tab, I see one new pull request. Here it is, adding Ellie's favorite song. It's a good one. I'm sure it's some sort of troll here. So we can take a look at his code. If we go to commits, let's see what he did. Say you will, oh, okay, it's actually not a sarcastic one. Thank you, Ellie. Say you will by Fleetwood Mac has been added in in his version. He forked it, as you can see, it's coming from his master branch of his fork. Now, if I want to accept it, I can click review changes and decide to comment if I want some more discussion and give feedback. Uh, if I want to approve, I can do it right here. So that's what I'm going to do now and click submit. I probably should have added a message. And then I'm going to click merge pull request, confirm merge. And now you can see Colt approved these changes. I merged the commit. Let's go back and take a look at what we have on the master branch playlist.txt. We now have that Fleetwood Mac song. But on my version, I don't have that. If I just do git log on my local version, I have nothing with Ellie. So if I want to get that, I need to pull that change down. It's only on GitHub. I'm working on the relaxing branch, so I'm going to git checkout master. Once again, <laughs> misspelled it. And then I'm going to pull from origin. So git pull origin master. And there we go. We have one file changed, one insertion. If I type git log, we can now see adding my favorite song that's coming from Ellie. And here it is. We now have Ellie's contribution. He forked it, he cloned it, he made his change, he pushed his change to his fork, he made a pull request, I accepted it, that was merged in, that was on GitHub, so then I pulled it down to my local repository, and now I have it. So, it's quite the process. Uh, if you're lost or a little confused, definitely take a look at the notes again. I'm gonna stop here. There's still more to talk about around collaboration, 
could do a whole video on best practices for pull requests, but hopefully this gives you a good overview of GitHub. You can use it on your own to showcase your code and share code. You can collaborate with people you trust and give them write permissions, and you can use pull requests to suggest changes to open source repos. Like anything in programming, Git and GitHub take practice. You really need to get used to those patterns, but eventually they'll be ingrained in your brain. For those of you who have been following along with my chicken journey, this is Stevie. He is definitely a he, he's a rooster. He's been waking me up every morning because right now he lives in the bedroom next to my room. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and Stevie and I will see you next week.